I, I could give you the preliminary information uh, for right now. Uh, we did have a wrong way driver reported to uh, Nevada State Police at 414 today. Um, ended up uh, being a head on crash. Um, there is a black GMC that we know of was traveling uh, eastbound into westbound travel lanes. Struck another vehicle head on. That vehicle rotated and struck another vehicle in the far right lane. Spun that vehicle out and both those vehicles caught fire. Um, right now we have uh, uh, two confirmed uh, uh, adult males deceased. We have one person that was stable condition that was transported, another adult male. And then we have a fourth adult male that was able to stay on scene that was uninjured at the time. To your knowledge, no women or children involved in the accident? No, it's going to be just four adult males. And like I said, it'll be the two that are deceased on scene. Were you getting 911 calls ahead of this accident um, reporting the wrong way driver? We, we did um, at 1608. I'll, 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 that's military time at 408. Uh, we did receive a call of a reckless driver that was wrong way at the uh, location of Lone Mountain. So uh, Nevada State Police uh, dispatched our troopers and they were en route. Um, by the time uh, it, it was uh, uh, 414, it had already been in a, a, a head-on collision. Lone Mountain is not close to here. How far would that driver have been going to the wrong way to get here? I have no idea. I couldn't okay, calculate the like miles. Absolutely, yes. So this wasn't like somebody just got on on the wrong, like right there in, in this. No, and, and it, it was reported that he was driving reckless and at, at a high rate of speed at the time. Can you say if intoxication was involved? Uh, unknown at this time. I mean, it's like I said, it's a pre preliminary investigation right now, so we don't know if alcohol or drugs are involved. Wrong way driving has been a real problem in the Valley. Talk to me about that, about, you know, what can you do in that situation if somebody's coming at you the wrong way? What really can you do to try to protect yourself? Well, things happen so fast. And I mean, uh, if, if they do see something like that, try to pull off and, and stop on, on the side of the road. But sometimes people don't have that opportunity because you might be on a curve and they come around and, and it's there. It's just that fast. When you're going 75 miles an hour and, and then you're also going 65 or whatever on that road, uh, it's hard to maneuver when you have a, a bunch of traffic. The, the bad thing is that this was during rush hour and uh, it's unfortunate that we lost two people, but it could have been even more, even a family, you know, like with kids and everything else. So I'm not trying to demean what, what, what had happened here, but it could have been even more tragic with more vehicles and we could have had more deceased people. But clearly one innocent driver lost their lives today because of a wrong way driver, you know, just driving on a regular everyday commute and faced a wrong way driver. Yes, and uh, you know, that's happened. Uh, several times this last couple months and uh, we'd like to curb the problem our, our dedicated troopers are out there trying to make all the stops we're, we're, we're getting the impaired drivers off the road um, we're not saying this is impaired driving or whatever we don't know the case on this but uh, yeah we're, we're dedicated to try to stop this but uh, I hopefully it's not a trend that that's uh, been happening lately and just last question for me you said that it was around the Lone Mountain. Do you have any idea if that, that is where the person got on on the on-ramp over there? Okay. No, I, I believe that was from a witness that, that we obtained uh, saying that they saw him around Lone Mountain. Just to clarify, you said the driver, the wrong way driver is one of the deceased, correct? That's correct. Okay. Yes. And when you guys got here, you know, obviously there was two vehicles on fire. Was there a third vehicle on fire? Yeah, the third vehicle. And that, that person was able to get out of the vehicle and, uh, and stayed on scene. He was not injured. And, uh, and that his vehicle did burn uh, to the ground on that. I know maybe a little early to tell, but you guys have an idea if the accident was the cause of the second person's death, or was it the fire that eventually you know caused that? It's accident? unknown at this okay. time. Yeah, I, it was a head-on collision, so we don't know if it was on impact or or afterwards. We so we that, can't. That person, to your knowledge, didn't make it out of the vehicle. Correct? That's correct. Yes, sir. The person who did go to the hospital, were they extricated from the vehicle? I do not know at, that, at this time. At the moment, there's a fatality number 78 from Melbourne. I'm sorry, what's that? There's a fatality uh, 78 from Melbourne. So what is the measure that you're concerned like, to the community like, to drive with more attention? Well, we always tell people to be alert. Always plan ahead. Um, you know, and I'm always telling people, even with even during rush hour with all these cars packed in, you always want to look ahead, at least six or seven car lengths, if not more, 
Um, so you, you can be able to stop or try to make maneuvers, but sometimes you, you, you're in that situation where you can't. So and unfortunately, we lost two people today, two adult males, and uh, um, it's, it's, it affects everybody. They, they have friends. This is somebody that's not going to be coming home. Um, and somebody it's not going to be there for Christmas or Thanksgiving. So it's another member of our community and just losing one person uh, is just uh, terrible for all of us out here today. One more quick follow up for me. Uh, sure. We know that wrong way driving signs are being added to a lot of the on ramps throughout the valley. Can you talk to me about that about you know, uh, I mean this was during the day. So I mean, who knows? I mean, it's so unusual to have it happen in the middle of the day like that. Uh, but talk to me about that, about wrong way signs and trying, what can really be done to prevent these sort of things from happening? I think there is some uh, extra uh, indicator signs going up, but I can't really talk about that because I don't have enough information on it right now. But you know, if you go to any of these uh, entrances and exits on every ramp, we do have wrong way signs posted, um, you know, to let drivers know. But selfless acts, people just go out and do what they do. And sometimes it might be an accident, uh, I mean, an a unfortunate uh, maneuver by somebody that they, they took a wrong turn or something. But uh, two of the main things in Nevada um, for fatalities is speed and impairment. And, uh, and we're always trying to combat that through that. So. Yeah, um, we're telling people to use alternate routes. Um, please avoid the area because we're going to have investigators out here for a while, um, and it's going to be closed for at least six to eight hours. Yeah, this is a pretty big scene, and we got three vehicles that we have to get, and we still have to make uh, extrications uh, from the uh, deceased parties. Where does the closure start and end? Just so people are. Aware? It, it's going to be just. Uh, it's going to be east of. Uh, Jones westbound, and then it's going to be the next right, right before. Um, I think it's going to be up to Durango. I mean, people probably could get on from Durango over there to go westbound, but it's all going to be blocked from there. And then, where was Channel 3? Uh, I'm sure you already kind of reiterated this, but um, kind of there was two deceased. Yeah, what we have is we have two deceased adult males. And uh, we have uh, one that was one adult male was transported to the hospital, a local area hospital, and we have uh, one adult male that stayed on scene that was uh, okay. And then, uh, I think that's good. Good enough. Or, you good? You guys.